Hello, my name is Zugerre and welcome to Hugo's Desk. Today I will review the brand new BenQ PD3220 from a professional point of view. This means I will test this monitor on my own visual effects pipeline and really go deep into its features. We will start with an overview of all the specs, then the I.O. and connections of the monitor, then move on to a full review topic by topic, and in the end, we'll have a pro and con section and a conclusion. You can jump to any of these topics by clicking in the timestamps below. I've been working professionally with this monitor for three months now, so I have a lot to share. But first, I would like to say that the BenQ provided me with this sample for review. Having said this, my channel will always create independent reviews, so this is an unbiased video about this monitor. The PD3220 is a brand new monitor from the design range of BenQ. For a long time, BenQ has several lines of professional monitors. For example, the SW range for photographers, the PV range for video production, and the PD range for designers. The first two are tailor-made for the photography and video market, but the PD, the one we're reviewing today, is what we can call a generalist monitor. In other words, it's a great monitor for designers, CAD artists, CG animators, lighters, texture artists, modelers, compositors, or any other artist in the creative industry that needs a 10-bit display for accuracy, but does not need some of the IN capabilities, you know, like hardware calibration, 100% Ryzen 09, all of these found on the PV and SW series. In terms of specs and features, we are looking at an IPS 4K 10-bit LED backlit panel with 31.5 inches. It has a non-reflective and it's anti-glare screen, making it ideal for open offices. It has 300 nits of brightness, a native contrast of 1000 to 1, a view angle of 178 degrees both left and right and up and down, 1.07 billion colors, HDR10 support, and it features the following modes, including 100% sRGB and 95% display P3 color space. It has an internal KVM for connecting two computers, both picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture, -picture, and an internal stereo speaker with two watts. In terms of connectivity, it includes a DisplayPort 1.4, Thunderbolt 3 with daisy chain capability, two HDMI 2.0s, capable of HDR10 at 4K at 60Hz, a USB 3.1 hub with four USB ports, two located in the back of the panel and two located on the side. Three of them are USB 3.1, but one of them is USB Type-C. We also, of course, have a headphone jack. The most important question here is, why do you need a professional monitor? To be a successful artist these days, it's not only about the core skills, the software knowledge, you also have to have good hardware. Today's most demanding visual effects design or film projects are delivered in 4K, HDR. Having a professional monitor means you can preview your work with the proper color fidelity and more pixel density. On this video, I will state the case for why you should use a 10-bit monitor for your professional creative work. In terms of design, just like the SW271, which you can check my review here, the panel is almost edge-to-edge, -edge, means that you can have a dual display without the annoying bevel in the middle. It looks really nice, the overhaul design is slick and very modern, a great step up from the older BenQ monitors. But let's get into the most important thing, color reproduction and uniformity. The PD3220 is equipped with the latest color standard. It's Kalman verified and Pantone validated as well. That is right, each professional BenQ monitor is factory calibrated and it brings an envelope with a calibration chart. It looks super fancy, right? But what does it all mean? Well, factory calibration means the monitor is tested with a color meter and checked for several things like color reproduction, panel uniformity. I made my own validation to check. I used an X-Rite Display Pro and Kalman 2018 
and I got a very respectable 1.5 of delta. You always want to be below 2 on the delta. It is a very good value considering that this monitor is not hardware calibrated like the SW or PV series. The calibration delta from the factory was around 1.2, so 1.5 is not really far off. Of course, you know, they're using a different and more expensive color meter than me. I'm sure the difference is coming from my side. Regarding uniformity, I also did a test with great results. Only had around 2 to 5% deviation on the edges. Again, completely normal. A bad result would have been between the 10 to 15%. Having said this, we do see a very subtle light leak on the edges. But this is perfectly normal for these panels and you really only see it when you're displaying a completely black frame and have all the lights on your office switched off. You can see this here on this photo. Of course, please keep in mind, this photo is an extreme long exposure. So it does show a much more exaggerated problem than it is really in, in reality. These light leaks on the edges are a normal issue with very thin edge monitors. It's basically because it's missing the large bevel edge of the old monitors to really cover completely the panel. BenQ explained to me that the edge-to-edge -edge was the most requested feature by designers. Regarding pixel density, this is a 4K monitor with 140 ppi. As seen here, the monitor is very sharp, and pixels really don't have any noticeable glow or artifacts. Just for fun, I thought this was a great opportunity to use my new macro lens. 4K is really dense and it looks amazing. Having this much resolution really helps the creative workflow. This means you can preview high resolution photos or textures at almost at one to one. It's great for texture work, for 3D. Having more screen real estate is a great advantage for these type of projects. To manage all the color spaces in the ICC profiles, we have something called the ICC Sync. This is probably one of the coolest new features of this monitor. It simplifies your ICC profiling so much. Not only you can control the IC profiles on the desktop software called Display Pilot, but it also syncs with Windows automatically, so gone are the days of uncertainties with color management. In fact, the Display Pilot software is so much more than just a great way to load ICC. It can control every aspect of your monitor. It can load LUTs, it can control the pips, it can control color, sharpness, saturation. Everything you see on the monitor's menu is present on this software. All these professional monitors are really like a DSLR. They have every manual setting you can imagine. You have total control over brightness, contrast, sharpness, HDMI range, gamma, hue, saturation, and even individual color settings to the RGB and Kelvin levels as well. This allows you to really customize your color calibration if you really want to go deeper. The monitor also supports HDR10. It looks beautiful when playing a 4K game or watching a 4K movie. The light sources really retain all their dynamic range and the color are so much more saturated. HDR is really the best way to watch any type of content and it's the closest you're gonna get to the dynamic range of the original footage filmed by a camera like the RED or the Alexa. Using HDR means you can watch a much more faithful version of the film, just like the creators intended to. I just finished Stranger Things Season 3 on this monitor, and oh boy, it was incredible. I was also very impressed by the fact that the HDR includes adjustments like brightness, contrast, sharpness, and full color control. This potentially allows for some HDR calibration using softwares like Kalman, or even the color bar generator. I really miss these type of settings on the SW320, and it's really great to see this type of improvement. All of this makes this monitor a great candidate to be a cheap HDR reference monitor. Of course, it's not good enough for color critical production work, but it's certainly good enough for previewing HDR content. It can be used, for example, on DaVinci, on Premiere, After Effects, Avid or Nuke. Here I have the monitor connected to a Blackmagic Decklink 4K, previewing a video signal in 10-bit 444 with a Rexenus 9 color space. The cool thing is that since it, you can change the gamma easily, between 1.8 and 2.6,
This means you can run the appropriate 2.4 gamma for grading reference. I could also use the same Blackmagic Decklink 4K to preview HDR on DaVinci or Final Cut X. It displays a really good 300 nit HDR preview. And after a few adjustments in DaVinci, I've used it to finish some short films. It works really well. But after reading the specs, you're probably thinking, only 300 nits on HDR, only five milliseconds on response time? Well, you need to understand that this is a 10-bit display. It's built for accuracy, not speed. You can find a consumer monitor with less than five milliseconds, but it won't have 10 bit, and it won't really be easy to calibrate. You can also find TVs with 500 or even 1,000 nits, but they won't be fully 100% sRGB or Rexons on 9, 10-bit. Having precision comes at a cost. If you need a 1,000 nit 10-bit HDR monitor, then you're looking at spending at least 20,000 on an Enzo prominence monitor. Not to mention, even if you look at a cheaper version, like an Enzo Color Edge CG, it only has 350 nits and it still costs over 4,000 pounds. Just like the PV and SW series, it includes a hotkey puck. You're probably asking, what is a puck? I can tell you once you use a hotkey puck, you will never again use a monitor without one. Long are the days of clicking on hard to reach buttons. This new version is even better than the older models. The wheel looks really smooth, it's really fast, and it really helps when you wanna do quick adjustments. In the old PV and SW series, you had to click to make adjustments. That made it very slow. This is a great way to switch LUTs on the fly, change any setting on the monitor. And one really cool thing is you can set the wheel to control the volume. In fact, all the puck buttons are completely customizable. It is pretty cool. I was very surprised by the four-way PVP. It's fantastic. It allows you to have four native one-to-one -one HD displays and a single monitor. It's a huge improvement on the older BenQ monitors that can only have two images side by side. From a professional point of view, this is great. You can use it to preview four sources of HD on, for example, a streaming, or if you're doing multiple camera shoots. On the other hand, I mean, who doesn't want to watch four sport events at the same time? <laughs> or if you want, you can watch Netflix while working. I mean, how else can you watch three episodes of The Punisher at the same time while you play the Mega Drive game? I love this function. It's great, and I wish more monitors had this type of option. I get a lot of people asking me on the web if you really need an NVIDIA Quadro or an AMD Radeon Pro to display 10-bit. Well, there's a lot of misunderstandings here, of course, you know, it's the internet. But yes, unfortunately, you do need an NVIDIA Quadro or an AMD Radeon Pro to have proper 10-bit on professional applications. Using a gaming card like a GeForce will give you 10-bit on the desktop, that's fine. And it will even give you 10-bit on gaming, but it will not use 10-bit on the creative applications like Photoshop, Nuke, DaVinci. Most of these applications need a professional card to correctly display OpenGL at 10-bit. Having said that, there's nothing wrong with using a regular gaming card on one of these monitors. In fact, I still recommend, even if you only have an 8-bit card, I recommend you buying a 10-bit display since the advantages regarding color accuracy and professional LUT support are enormous compared to a regular consumer monitor. Not to mention you're going to be future-proofing your pipeline. The bottom line is, if you're a student or not working in the industry yet, you should probably stick with your regular GTX. But if you are a professional working in the industry, then you should use a professional card, and especially if you're finishing projects, like a colorist or a grading artist, then you should really use a Quadro or a Radeon Pro. And this is not just about the 10-bit support. These cards also are more stable, they have more tested drivers, they have full support from the developers, and they can really bring more stability into your system. If you have a hardware problem, for example, it's much more tricky to support weird combinations of consumer motherboards with consumer graphic cards. If you want to find out more, I left some links on the description. DualView allows some quick multi-LUT support so you can test your image side by side, which is great, making it easy to check your assets, for example, in sRGB and Rexon Zonan at the same time. I like this feature a lot, but I personally prefer to use two monitors, but it's a great feature to have for sure. 
It also includes a pip function, but I'll be honest, I don't really know what the point of this is. It kind of is slow to move around and it kind of covers your desktop. This monitor ha also has the capability of working as a KVM switch for two different computers. This means you can connect two computers with a single keyboard and a, a mouse for seamless switch backwards and forwards between two machines. The monitor can also easily be placed in vertical mode. This could be great for coding, scripting, web design, photo galleries, or even if you want to have a huge Nuke node composting graph. Just look at this, how awesome is that? But I did find another cool use for this mode. You can play the best vertical shooter ever made. Ikurami on Switch. I guess it can also be used as a huge Facebook wall if you really want to do that, I guess. High care is probably a very underrated feature, but as someone that has optical nerve damage from working way too much, I really appreciate what BenQ is doing here. This monitor has many different filters, so you can save your eyes from a lot of fatigue. For example, you can have a low blue light filter set to multimedia, web surfing, office or reading. These filters should not of course be used when you're doing color accurate work, but they're a great way to help you relax your eyes on those moments where you're just like reading a book or maybe a PDF or just surfing the web. So what are the pros and cons? So on the cons, for me not having ICC Sync or DisplayPilot software on the Mac is a real shame. Currently it only works on Windows. Hopefully it will be changed soon. I am missing the hardware calibration, but I understand that this is a more advanced thing that probably is more suited for the PV and the SW. Not having full Rexon 09 is a shame, but like I mentioned, if you really need 100% Rexon 09, you should really get a PV series. I miss the handle to carry really. The older models had a handle and it was really cool to carry around the monitor if you needed to. There is no sun hood, and this for me is a big miss. I think all these monitors should always have a sun cover. But let's move on to the pros. Definitely a pro, 100% sRGB, by far the most important feature for a designer monitor. Also 95% P3 is great to have this new gamut color profile to use. I love the new puck, it is awesome. The new stand is really cool because it's much smaller and it looks much better on your desk, and also it takes much less space. Thunderbolt 3 support and daisy chain is really cool. Two HDMI 2.0s that support HDR10. The 4x4 picture is an amazing feature. The KVM is a great feature for small offices or spaces. The iCare feature and all its low blue light filters is great. The monitor is also not reflective and it has a lot of anti-glare. In conclusion, if you are a designer, a 3D artist or a composter, this is a great monitor to buy. It has all the professional features you need without breaking the bank. It's an incredible versatile monitor with 10 bit that could really make a difference in your pipeline. I can guarantee you that once you work with the 10 bit display, there is no turning back. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.